nice for you to calling me um oh wait i'm just putting my screen away of course well thank you um yeah we do it online now because of covid so i'm happily to facetime it's luckily that we have this app these days so we can still communicate with each other i will um introduce myself a bit um my name is Liderai. i'm social innovator at the performatory team 14 and i'm a strong believer in connections within communities and um, also in innovation, what uh, I believe can improve uh, social uh, challenges within this world. And I did some research on social behavior connected to media, politics and um, yeah, societal challenges. And yeah, in this video or uh, this presentation, I want to share you what I did the last um, couple of weeks, um, what um, the innovation social media does and also like uh, yeah, why we're we using it and uh, why, yeah, why we're we doing it. So I'm just going to share my screen how we all do it. And yeah, just stay in the call and uh, enjoy your ride, I think. 96% of the people in the Netherlands are currently active on social media. Within an average of 98 minutes spent daily on social media. Social media is defined as a form of electronic communication, such as websites for share information, ideas, personal messages and other content, such as videos. At first, social media exists to help end users, the people who use social media for private needs, connect digitally with friends, colleagues, family members and like-minded individuals they might never have met in person. Later on, dark shadows adjust to social media. They are called dark shadows because they are influencing the essential elements of social media and give social media a dark twist. To understand why we're using social media and how we use it, I made a model that brings you to different social media users' faces and what happens with your process as a social media user. Phase 1. Your personal need. We are social animals and we love to interact and be a part of a group of people. I won't say this is for everybody. In my research, I found most people feel the need to be social. As a social media user, we have some basic needs we find within the social media platform. Building communities. You are looking for people with the same interests or values and you feel a part of a group. Make a connection, relationship, friendship or partners, for example, what you did when you were in school, when you made new school friends. Confirmation, like relationship status and likes confirming people like your picture not feel alone. In a way, if you look at your social media, you're not feeling alone. Validation. Because it's your profile and you feel like you're the end user in the social media platform, everybody can be a film star by putting content on your YouTube channel. For example, Esme Denters. She was the first Dutch end user of social media who became a professional singer through YouTube. Let me give you another recent example. Because of the COVID pandemic, the government gives rules top down on what everyone can and cannot do. Social media gives people the opportunity to express their feelings and opinion. I will come back to this need of being heard or validation via social media because it goes much deeper than that. There are basic needs of social media users. You have four elements in social media, but how does it work? So you have the platform, like an app or a server. Think of um, Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat, all platforms where you can use. So you also have the people, so you and me, the users who use social media. The interaction. In, with interaction, I mean the conversation or the sharing, like sharing contact or uh, have a conversation on Facebook or slide in your DM, you know? And you have the content, of course. So that are video, photos, text, like also TikTok. So these four elements uh, interact and create social media. So at first you talk to your friends and your direct contacts. Simply share what you did today or share photos of your cat being cute. But what happened during the years of development is that more people started using social media. You can have contact with people worldwide and new technologies create more content like Instagram or YouTube. This resulted in a huge amount of users and content. This is where the algorithms comes into place. An algorithm helps you to get through all the content on social media. It will select the thing you like and only shows you what you like and what you see. 
or maybe it shows people who you want to connect with. An algorithm is a filter that filters out what you don't wish to see and guides you on your timeline. Sounds good, right? Or not? This brings me to phase two of using social media. Now you know the basic of social media and why you like to use it. I want to explain what happens with you if you use social media for a longer time. You have changed in ways that you might not be aware of. What changed within social media that you maybe do not know? Phase two, tools, filter bubble, fake news. As you heard, there are great things about social media, but there are some dark shadows that you need to be aware of. The algorithm is there to filter the content, but over the years, big social media companies have changed the end user goal into a business user goal. That means that you think you still are the only user of the profile and you are, in a way. But the algorithm changed your feed to a business model by which big companies can make money off. Let's take the fundamental four elements that created social media. So platform, app or server, people, the users, interaction, conversation and sharing, content, video, photo, text and advertising. These four elements are still the same, but advertisements are added to the content. How? You see products just like advertisements on TV. But you know algorithms can filter advertisement things you especially like. The algorithm shows you videos of cute cats you like, and it also shows you the shoes you like to buy. The shoe advert they show is called direct advertisement. Business direct advertisement is one of the dark shadows over your social media that happens without your knowledge. The more time you spend on social media, the better the algorithms can create filter bubbles. Algorithms are getting more efficient and will create a filter bubble. A filter bubble is a situation in which an internet user accounts only the information and option that confirm and reinforce their own beliefs caused by algorithms that personalize your own online experience. What I already explained, you only see the content you want to see. So it's hard to see other things outside your bubble. If you are not coming out of your bubble, it creates binary thinking. So black and white thinking, yes or no. This can lead to polarization and division into two sharply contrasting groups or sets of opinions or beliefs. Polarization can make it very difficult to make your own decision in real life. For example, voting in your government election. Till now I just talked about real things like friends or advertisement, content that is real or created in fact. But other important dark shadows connected to the filter bubble is fake news. Algorithms don't know what is true or not. As users we create content and the challenge is that we don't always know it's true. Users can make up their own story, put it on social media platform and others can believe it. But the collaboration with algorithm is that fake news can spread and create disbelief or confusion. Fake news can be used to manipulate the user or reader. It can have different outcomes, just for the fun or create chaos. It is hard to see what is real or not. It's a challenging question. Because do you know what is true or not? There are tricks to learn how to see fake news, but it's always about beliefs and facts, so a delicate discussion. If you add all these tricks and tools or shadows to the essential elements of social media, you get the platform, people, interaction, content, and the shadows around it, the algorithm and the filter bubble. Suppose you understand now how social media in essential means and how the system is in bit in place. And the next phase is the challenge we face within society and ourselves as users. Social media, you can see it as a tool or an innovation and affects us as human, like cigarettes or a simple creation like a bike. But what is the effect of social media on our value and our behavior? Also, what bigger picture or system do we see because we are using social media? Behavioral changes. Phase 3. You can almost think that social media has become a selfish way and an individual target. Even a bit scary with all those shadows. In the world of social media, you felt more connected with your beliefs and values and connected them with many others in this world. It is not only the communities in your little village, it's worldwide. The example that I gave at the beginning of this video about COVID-19 shows you how people feel that they can react and share their beliefs and feel hurt. 
The essential four elements of social media, plus the filter bubble, fake news and algorithms, created a cocktail that will affect your behavior as a user in the real world. Like drinking too much alcohol will make you feel drunk and can make you do different things. There are examples of changing behavior by using social media, which can challenge us in real life. Less trust in the media. Because of different sources, content and fake news, people don't know what to believe anymore. The news was in 1900 from only one newspaper with a journalist who decide what is important to put in the news. Now we get information from any sources. To filter on your own what fake news is or not is more challenging than ever. Because of the algorithm that filters for you what you like to believe, with this insecurities, people will go to people they trust in their own community or maybe the people they follow on social media. Pressure on democracy. Another big challenge is our political system. We need to structure a political government to run a country. Because if we all want to make the rules, it will be a mess. In the Netherlands, we have created democracy, where everyone feels like they matter. You vote and you trust that all the votes get counted and the outcome is believable and fair. Social media puts pressure on democracy. If you look for example, the fake news can shift your beliefs in parties. For example, the US election in 2020. President Trump used Twitter to say the election was fixed and the votes counted unfairly. Social media also becomes even more dangerous because people like the President Trump have a lot of followers. So a huge amount of people will get involved in this thing which makes it more challenging or even dangerous. One message on Twitter created questions and confusion on the rights and the beliefs of democracy. The pressure on this form of political system is challenged. And don't get me wrong, we need to be critical of a system and if it's legally done. Conspiracy theories. I believe that some secret yet influential organizations are behind traumatic events. It's common to find communities spreading conspiracy theories on social media. Groups of people come together to create and spread these theories. For example, the COVID pandemic. You might think there are harmless theories for a minority of people, but it can quickly add up. I talked with a social media conspiracy theory expert who did research on people between the age of 18 and 35. In the Netherlands, around 20% do not believe in COVID to a certain extent. That is one out of five people. You can only imagine how this increased by social media. This brings me on to phase four, action. I hope we'll never reach this phase. The behavioral change that I mentioned in phase three can eventually be acted on in real life. People are judging for themselves and acting on their beliefs alone. As social innovator, we need to step up in a way that we don't reach this phase. I'm afraid of the repercussion if we don't. Hey guys, I hope you're still there. Um, within this research and this video, I think you guys maybe will get scared a bit because I got that too when I started with social media, the research, because this video can make you feel like you want to quit social media, you put it off your phone and, um, but that's not the message what I want to tell you with this video. Because in phase two, I showed you there are different influences that um, control the social media and your behavior and how you think about things and that can act upon in uh, phase three and even phase four what i showed you all the examples so don't be scared because um it's an invention will actually have great things we're meeting people worldwide we're seeing a lot of things happening but i think it shows us that we as people um, need to look at each other what behavior we have like the political system what um is democracy in this digital age how are we going to handle this or if you look on the business side like why we are becoming a product and how are we going to um, balance this out and where we can to, um, contribute in um, the system. So what big pictures innovation shows us and how we going to handle, handle this? Because we didn't get a manual of like when social media get invented, like how to use it. But we need to understand uh, the system and how it definitely works in order to change. So I actually explained you what players are in the field of social media. So I would just want to say, don't hate the game, just hate the players who are playing it. Thank you and um, call me later. And if you want to know more information, call me on FaceTime or Teams and I will explain you more about my research. Thank you. <laughs>